Yo, what up, YouTube? It's your boy Penny Less One back. I know I keep saying this, but it's been a minute. But what I'm doing today, I'm going to try to get my factory uh, temp gauge and my factory oil pressure gauge working with the LS swap. So let me turn the camera around and show you what I, what I got and uh, see if we can get this working. All right, so I got factory G-body sending units for the Monte Carlo. This one is the temp sensor. That's the part number, AC Delco and GM. Show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is the factory sending unit for the gauge on the temperature sensor. Just has a single spade connector and I've got some of these to adapt the wire to it. This is the oil pressure sending unit for the gauge. There's the part numbers, AC Delco and GM. I'll show you what it looks like. Now this is the only one I don't like cause it's so big. So this is what it looks like. Okay. This is, this is a one eighth MP3, uh, MP3, <laughs> one eighth NPT. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. And this one is a three eighths. And it came with this Teflon tape on it and this came with this, uh, with this pace. <clears throat> so in order to get these to work in the LS, I had to get these adapters. Okay, this one is for the oil pressure, I mean for the temp sensor. It's a 12 millimeter or M12, 1.5 pitch. And then, let me take it out. <clears throat> so M12, so this will go on the side of the head, M12, 1.5. This is a 3 8 MPT, so it'll fit the actual sending unit. This is an ICT billet adapter. Here's the part number, 551179. See, it says M12 1.5 adapter to 3.8 NPT. So that's for the temperature. And then this one right here is for the oil pressure sending unit. And that one is, I believe, M16 to 1.8. Here's the part number for that again ICT billet 551172 M16 1.5 pitch adapter to 1/8 NPT. So basically, this will screw into that. <clears throat> that allowed me to adapt into the back of the uh, what is the top of the engine on the back by the valley cover. Oh, damn it, hold on. Now, so, what I'm gonna do, let me show you on my mock up block that I got here exactly what I'm talking about, so you'll get a better picture. All right, hope y'all can see this and hear me. Also, I had to get this. This is a one and one sixteenth oil pressure socket, oil pressure uh, sender unit socket. This is the factory socket or uh, sender on the LS1s. And they all cheap, so I break, this broke. But basically this socket goes over and it's, it's big enough to cover the whole sensor, but it's it's sh uh, shallow, so it doesn't rub up against the cam sensor so that you can actually take this out. Now, I've already taken this out of the motor that's in the car, so I just put it on here for demonstration purposes so y'all can see it. So once you get this out, see, this is trash. I mean, anyway. So the adapter for this portion is this one right here so this goes in here like so but you know what? let me take this crush washer off because I'm not gonna tighten it down yet so so you basically you'll put this on there snug it down okay and let me get the sensor <clears throat> and then you'll take the sending unit I think there's enough room behind there for this to fit without rubbing the intake manifold. And you just tighten it now. Like I said, this is MPT, so these these threads are tapered. So as you tighten it in there, you feel it like it's already getting tight. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I just wanna show y'all. Now, I don't know. What I'm gonna do is end up, I'm gonna tighten this into the fitting on this block before I put it in the car because I don't wanna tighten it with this. I've, had, I've heard people say that if you tighten it with this, you actually strip out the, uh, the bottom part okay so next let me back you up a little bit so if you can see that right there this is the passenger side head 
This is the back part. See that? There's a little Allen key bolt right there. And I believe this is a number four. No, number eight. So you need an eight millimeter Allen key to get this off. And there might be some cooler in here. I don't know. But what? Wait, am I going the wrong way? Hold on. This motherfucker tight. There we go. So I don't know if I'm better to get that off inside of the car because this some bitch is tight. And it's, it's tight in the car. It's tight. Boom. So you'll take this out. And the adapter. All right, so that came right out. The adapter for this side will go right in here. Like so. Here's the sending unit. This will go in there like so. Simple as that. Let me give you a closer look. I mean, so far it look good the only thing i don't like is when you put this one on just try to get as straight as possible because it's it doesn't have a tapered in here to get the thread started and it looked like it was going in sideways so you don't want to do that and strip out the thread so just try to get it in as straight as you can before you start it before you start torquing it down so so like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna tighten this into this fitting on the block and i'm gonna use a wrench to hold this so it doesn't spin and then once I put it in the car, I'll put the crush washer on there. And um, so now what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna make up the wire leads that's gonna go on these. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so I got some green wire. I tried to find some of that orange tennis wire, but I couldn't, so I just got brown. But uh, I'm just gonna connect these to these book connectors. I mean, these spade connectors. These are just female spade to go on the male. So just going like this. I mean, this ain't the best, but this is, that's what it takes. So I'm just gonna make a wire lead. I'm gonna crimp it on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little solder in the end right there, because this is gonna be ex pretty much exposed. And you know, these cars don't have no splash here, so water may get on that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put solder in the end of this. And then of course, once I connect this wire to the wire in the car, I'm actually gonna solder these joints together and heat shrink them. So I'm gonna put you on time-lapse while I do this. Get this out the way real quick.
All right, so I got my leads put together. So y'all, so I got this female spade crimped on. These are waterproof ones. I put a little solder in the end to try to keep moisture and water out of there. And then I put another piece shrink on top. So now I just need to get the sensors in the car. So let me, let me get these put together. So you can see I already got that one out. So I'm just gonna stick this one down in there and try to get it to seal up. And that's the oil pressure. So let me let me put this sending unit back over here, see if I can get it straight. Got me a extension and uh, I'm gonna try to put this on. And, and snug it down. Well, see, I don't want to put that crush washer on and then, nah, it'll work. So let me do this. Get it in there by hand first, like so. See, that's exactly what I was trying not to do. Fuck. I knew that. I knew that shit was gonna work. I didn't drop the damn washer somewhere behind the fucking engine. Bitch. And it's not. It's aluminum, so I can't use no magnet to find it. Let me get a lamp, a light. Hold on. All right, y'all, so I got the temp sensor on. I had to use this Allen key with this extension to get leverage. So the guy got it on there like that, and then I had to, you know, I needed leverage to break it loose. But as you can see, it's on there. It's a little long, but it'll do. Now I just need to get a wrench on there and torque it down to crush that washer so I got a good seal. I did drop the washer for the uh, the oil pressure, so let me tighten this one up. Then I'm gonna run up to the parts store and get another crush washer for the oil, and we should get this all buttoned back up. And as y'all can see, I did take the coil pack off on this side because it's just hard to reach that back. I had the same issue when I was taking off the uh, header. So, man, I don't even think I can get my wrench on the header now with that sensor in there. So, anyway. All right, y'all, uh, I told y'all I dropped the damn, the crush washer for the oil cylinder. I went to two AutoZones, one Advanced and a O'Reilly. Nobody had crush washers uh, size M16. So the last AutoZone I stopped at, they didn't have any crush washers, but they did have this. Check this out. I should have got this first. This is a IECOS part number 9848. Now, Pat did mention this to me, so that's my bad for not even paying attention. So, in this kit, you got the M12 1.5 and the M16 1.5. So, I think both of my adapters are in here, and this was only 12 bucks. So, anyway, let me get back to the crib. Let me bust this open. And that oil sending unit should fit. I think it's this one right where to go this one right here m16 1.5 and that looks like a 1a right here so let me get back to the crib and get this on there and see what we got all right y'all i didn't know how to take the damn intake metaphor off because i dropped the second washer behind there but anyway look with that uh equios adapter see how short it is i can't it won't it won't clear the uh see that bolt right there so it won't clear that so i'm gonna go ahead and put this one on there this one is a little bit taller so Anyways, I had to take the intake manifold off just to get behind there to get this on there. I don't, I hope that's enough room, but let me switch out this thing and we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put put the leads on there before I button this back up, even though I, you can still reach it from the top. I mean, that's, it's not really a good, nah, yeah, that's all right. It's not a bad connection. Now I'm gonna wrap this up once I connect it. But I just wanna put this on here since I got everything out the way. And then I'm gonna take this green one. 
So we'll come over here, see if I can't get it on. Oh, let me set it up. Hold on, let me set y'all up. Hold on. And like I said, I'm gonna wrap these wires, especially this one, since it's close to the header. But I just wanna plug it up. So now when I button everything back up, everything is in place. Cause I can't test it <laughs> with the intake off. So let me get everything fast back up and I, I'll be back. Holla at y'all. All right, we ran into a little, little snag. So if you look at this, now this sense sending unit is the only sending unit that I know of that'll work with the stock G body gauge. But if you can see the intake, see that right there? I can't get this screwed in far enough to clear this intake. And I can't I can't get the intake bolts to line up. And if you see it, I still got a gap right here. I need about that much more room and I'm tightening it and it's not going any further down. So I'm just gonna have to figure out, I may just have to wait until I get the, I may just fucking go with the damn decoder digital. But I mean, I could run a, a auto meter, auto meter, um, mechanical gauge to get oil pressure. But I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put that plug back in there for right now and just take this shit out. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the temp sensor and make sure that works. Cause I'm, I'm tired of fucking with this right now. So, all right, y'all. All right, we about ready to start it up. I got the coil packs back on. Just need to plug up the wires. So I got the green wire connected. I'm gonna solder this, but I'm just gonna tape it up right now. I'm gonna start the car up better, get up the temp, see if the gauge works. Once everything is confirmed, I'll cut the wire down to size, solder everything, heat shrink it, and we'll wrap it up. So let me get these plugs on, put this tape on here, and uh, we're gonna fire it up. It's cold in the motherfucker out here. All right, we about finished with the uh, gauge install. I did run into a little snag, so let me show you what I ended up doing to get the oil pressure gauge to work. Now, I still don't got the, the temp sensor working, but let me show you because I think it's, well, I'll show you in a minute, but there's that fitting came with Teflon tape on it. So I don't know if that's preventing it from getting a good ground or not. So I'm going to take that out and put some uh, thread sealing on there, the liquid kind. But I don't feel like taking it off now because I don't feel like dealing with the coolant leaking out. Um, but I did get the oil pressure. So let me show you the remedy that I decided to go with. So let me turn the camera around. Okay. So like I said, these are the wires coming out of the bulkhead right here. The green one, I got hooked up to the temp sensor. This little tannish looking one, I got hooked up to the oil pressure. So if you look down in there, you see that line? I'll put the part numbers on the screen, but in in place of the sending unit, I have a Earl's fitting to M16 to a uh, AN3, I think, yeah, AN3. So this is a stainless steel AN line. This is a Dash 3. So basically I'm going with a remote uh, sending unit setup for the oil. I'm going with a remote setup. I did get a couple of guys tell me I could put a 45 angle uh, adapter back there and it, sh and it should fit. But I had already went to the store and got this and it works. So like I said, this is a Dash 3 line, stainless steel. And I just ran over here and I'm, I have to mount this. Here's the sending unit. On this end, I have a another AN fitting. So one eighth MPT on this end, and it's a dash six, I'm sorry, dash three on this end that goes into this dash three line. This little piece right here I got from Lowe's, I think it's called a conduit, conduit. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put it up on the screen, but this one is I think a one and a, uh, is it a half inch? It's number two and a half, but I think it's like a one and a quarter. That's how big yet it is right there, one and a quarter. That's perfect size to clamp on here and you can tighten it down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mount it with this hole right here, probably on the side of the fender well over here somewhere. And then here's my, my, my brown wire feed going to the bulkhead wire. So let me start it up and I'll show you that the oil pressure gauge does work. Matter of fact, let me unplug it and I'll show you because it was pegged all the way over to the right. Now the temp sensor, like I said, it's not working because I think there's too much uh, tape on that on that fitting to where that sending unit's not getting the ground. So this is gonna be a cold start, so let me get it started up for y'all. All right, y'all, let me do this cold start. 
And if y'all know, if I got the wires hooked up wrong, let me know. But I can't get the temperature you send the unit to work. I don't know if it's I got the wrong wire hooked up to it or if it's that uh, the threads, that um, pipe tape on there that's preventing it from getting a good ground. But you can see I took the wire off the oil. See how it's pegged over to 60? So we know that's not going to work. So watch, I'm going to go ahead and plug it up and you'll see it jump over to zero. Hold on. All right, so I hooked the wire up. Now, sorry for this video being long, man, but I'm trying to make a good detailed video because I couldn't find a lot of information on this oil pressure uh, sending unit. So now you can see it's working. And then when I start it up, just, like I said, it's a cold start, so it's going to be loud. Hold on. ground wire for these gauge clusters so i definitely need to find that so i don't know if that's why the temp unit it's not working battery works fuel works we'll do the speedo later this was working it just was off it wasn't regulated well it wasn't calibrated but we definitely got oil pressure all right i'm gonna just let it run i'm gonna step out and holler at y'all but yeah like i said man i got it working i got the oil pressure that was my main concern I mean, obviously, I do need to know what the temperature is, too. But I know the computer is running the fans, so the fans do kick on. So I know, I mean, this radiator is, is huge, so it's keeping the car pretty cool. But I want I just wanted to make this video because, like I said, I had a hard time finding information on this. Everybody that I see LS swapping, normally they're running aftermarket gauges. So those sensors are are small just like the ls sensor so they fit that that uh, at least the oil pressure one it fits in a stock location with no with no clearance issues now i did get a couple of guys hit me up last night on instagram and they were telling me to just put a uh, 45 degree elbow on it and i should have enough room for that acorn that big ass acorn uh sending unit to clear but i had already bought this kit so i ran with it i may change it out but i mean it's working right now so i'm gonna stick with it but like i said i just wanted to i put all the part numbers in the description and I should also have them on the screen when I was talking about them, but I'll put everything down in the description below. So some of you, some of you guys I know are still new to it, just like I am. And y'all reach out to me every now and then and ask me questions. So I try to give all the information that, that as I learn it, so make it easier on the next person that's trying to do the same thing. But I appreciate everybody that reached out to me, you know, give me little tips and pointers. But like I say, this is my first one. I didn't do the swap, but I'm just kind of tying up all the loose ends but I am learning a lot. So by the time I get ready to do this 5.3 that I got sitting over here in the corner, whatever vehicle I decide to put that in, I mean, by the time that motor goes in, whatever vehicle, I mean, I'm gonna pretty much know everything I need to know to put it in, get it running, wired up, fired up. So that's the good thing about this. Like, so I did pay somebody to put this motor into Monte Carlo, um, but I'm tightening up some loose ends and you know some of the work that that I didn't pay them to do. And it just like I said, it's making it for good, good, a good learning experience. So, but anyway, I want to keep y'all, man. I show peace out y'all for rocking with me once again. Like I said, Penny LS1 back again. It's my, it might, it might, shouldn't be that much longer. I got a brake video coming. I know a lot of you guys are really interested in those brakes. Um, so y'all know I got the C5 brakes that I'm gonna put. Damn, hold on, man. My gimbal tripping. Y'all know I got the uh, the C5 brakes off the Corvette that I'm putting on here with the Core 3 bracket. But I still haven't got any wheels yet. Those have to be at least 17 to clear. So what I do have, the Blazer spindles that I have, I actually have the whole assembly with the calipers and everything. So I'm actually in the process of cleaning up those calipers. I've already dremeled one of them down. Matter of fact, let me show you, hold on. So here's one of the calipers off the Blazer. I've already took my Dremel and sanded it down. I'm gonna paint these. They work, because when I was pushing the piston in, I had taken the uh, the banjo boat off and fluid was coming out, so I know they they still work. So I'm gonna clean these up, paint them, paint the brackets, and then I'm just gonna buy new rotors and pads, the Blazer rotor and pads, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put them on. These stock, with the stock rotors, will clear the 15 inch uh, G body wheel. So, so I just wanted to put that out there. I know I got a lot of guys that still watch that <laughs> one of my first videos with the brakes, and you know every now and then I get a question. No, I have not put them on yet. 
Um, like I said, when I did that video, I didn't even have a car. So I was just doing something just to kind of pass time until I got my money right to get the car home. But I got everything here except for the wheels that I want to run. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Blazer brakes on stock before I put the C5 Corvette. So I will do an in-depth video on that. So a lot of some some of you guys that were asking me questions about that, if you want to run the the Blazer ones, I mean it's a dual piston caliber just like the C5. The only difference is the rotor isn't as large, but it's still bigger than the uh, I believe it's still bigger than the the stock G body rotor. Obviously the the caliber is a single piston, so you're upgrading on that anyway. So, but anyway, man, let me let y'all get up out of here, man. Stay tuned to the next video. Penny LS1. Holla at your boy.